The iPhone 16 is a great phone, but you already knew that. So what I want to share with you is what it's like in everyday life. Not as a filmmaker or a professional mobile gamer, just everyday use. Starting with this new action button. Well, kinda new action button. The action button is Apple's customizable button which can be mapped to do pretty much whatever you want it to do. And with iOS 18, it's even better than last year. They've made it easier to customize and have added functions like recognizing music, which is actually quite useful. In theory, having a customizable button for the iPhone is a big deal, right? But in practice, what you're actually gonna use it for. After a year of using the button with the 15 Pro, apparently a lot of people still use it to just toggle silent mode on and off, which is basically what we had before. The button is also not positioned in the best place, which means you end up kind of shuffling your hand around if you want to click it. I feel like while having a customizable button is nice, for most of us, it's not going to be that useful. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it's not that useful. And anyway, we've had a back tap function since iOS 14, which can also be customized to do basically anything you want, including opening up your camera. Of course, with the iPhone 16, we have a new dedicated camera button to do that. The new button allows you to quickly access the camera with one tap. While your camera is open, pressing the button lightly and swiping left and right will allow you to make adjustments to your image, zooming in and out for example. A deeper press sets your camera into video mode and will start recording. Having a dedicated camera button is quite a smart move by Apple. It shows that they understand that people just want to be able to take Instagram ready pictures and videos with one click of their phone. Unfortunately, in real life, the button's not that game changing. Now can you open up your camera quickly? Yes, but I do have three main problems with it. Problem one, the positioning of the button feels unnatural when you're taking landscape pictures. I thought it was just me, but apparently a lot of people feel the same way. The button placement is a little off, which means it's easier to just tap the screen the normal way. Problem two, toggling advanced settings with this camera button is a pain. Another selling point of this button was to allow users to easily adjust stuff like depth of field and exposure with one finger. In reality, it's way too fiddly. While trying this phone in the Apple store, even the staff members couldn't really get it to work properly. And problem three, even its default zooming in and out function isn't that easy to use. I've been forcing myself to use it over the last week, but to be honest, it's just easier to control zoom on the screen. It's a shame that the camera button function is starting to feel like a feature that no one really asked for, but the camera itself is really good, and I do think iPhones in general produce the most aesthetically pleasing images. The 16 is no different and has the same 48 megapixel camera as the 15, making these phones perfect for taking pictures for social media. Oh, by the way, you probably noticed that the camera lens layout has changed, back to being inline. As far as I can tell, this redesign was made to allow the 16 to take spatial photos, a type of photo which can only be viewed on the $3,000 Apple Vision Pros. So basically, a pointless change for most people. You can swipe through different styles to add different looks to your image, and this box at the bottom allows you to adjust these styles even more. Considering how important a phone's photo taking ability is nowadays, I'd say this is one of the best things about the iPhone 16. Usually I don't like the inbuilt camera filters, but some of the photographic styles are genuinely nice, and I'll flick through some of them for you now. Also, this box at the bottom actually makes some quite advanced adjustments to your image in a really easy and intuitive way. Together, the improved system allows for further creativity with your shots. Opening up the world of photo editing to a bunch of people who probably had very little interest before. Now, if you have even a little interest in technology, do consider dropping my channel subscribe because it does help out a lot. I think that's something special about iPhones and the iPhone 16 in particular. The device is such a gateway into wanting to create better content. It's good with photos, but I think even better with videos. It can shoot high quality 4K footage and stabilizes your image to make those shaky hands less noticeable. In everyday use, it's reliable, meaning you don't need to worry too much about a shot being too bright or too dark, and in general can just hit record. For those of you thinking of taking video further, the iPhone is the perfect place to start and will take you well into your video journey. In fact, lots of YouTubers are using iPhones for all their content. And if you're still not convinced, you can check out the weekend's video, which was also shot on an iPhone 16. Overall, I reckon the iPhone 16 is a great phone. Oh, and I didn't touch on this earlier, but it does have the upgraded A18 chip, which means faster processing power and all that stuff. But to be honest, phones haven't really struggled with performance for a while, especially if we're talking everyday tasks. 
If you're looking at doing more professional things with your phone, you're probably looking at getting something like the 16 Pro anyway, which you can watch a video on here, unless of course you're watching this early, in which case, thank you for watching. Peace.